Uh, Kane is going to run us through. If he had a blank canvas, we know you don't want the blank canvas, Kane. You just told us that. But if you had one, and we'll get Matthew to do the same on the back of Lee Matthews' comments, of course, who started all this, Lee Matthews. What would you do, Kane? Yeah, it's nothing dramatic for me, Hutchie, but it's about the integrity of the game for me. So there's clearly going to be a separation between the haves and the have-nots. So you must cap footy department spend. And I know it's capped at the moment, but you can still go over it. And if you go over it, you can pay some sort of tax on it. That, that's out the window. You have to make sure that every team has the same amount of salary cap and same amount that they can spend on their footy department. Otherwise, the good will separate from the rest. We need a fairer fixture. I can't stomach that Richmond and Collingwood can get 14 games at the MCG. And it's uh, you, you cannot imagine a team having seven games at the MCG in the lead-up to the finals like Richmond had last year. That cannot happen, and that's about the integrity of the game. So the fixture needs to be looked at, and they just can't get the benefit of not leaving Melbourne for the majority of the year. Number three, similar. No big deal, but a home final means a home final. If Geelong qualify for a home final, they get a home final. They don't have to go and play at the MC against Collingwood like they did last year. This is about the integrity of the game. The one tweak I would make to the rules is I would cap interchange. I think it would allow players not to be able to put the amount of pressure that we're seeing on the game at the moment to give us more one-on-one -on -one contests and the game and the field would open up and the scoring would increase. So that's one change I would make. And finally, I'm really concerned about the welfare of assistant coaches. They work ridiculous hours as it is at the moment. When those resources are cut, senior coaches aren't going to become any less demanding than they are at the moment. They'll demand extra on the assistant coaches that are left. So you've got to cap their online time that they're working and their time at the football club. Otherwise, these assistant coaches will be worked to the bone from hungry, driven senior coaches that just won't change, even though they've gone from 10 assistant coaches to six or seven. Well, I certainly don't think less meetings will be a problem in the brave new world, Kane, but you've just got to accept Richmond and Collingwood have the MCG as their home ground. Here you go again, Richmond. Of, no, this a is, lot... You've okay. got, to get, got to get over A the lot of Not other fair. clubs have the MCG as their home ground. It, those games that Richmond had at the end of last year, yes, it looked embarrassing, but it's bunkum to say they didn't travel. They travelled as much as any other Victorian team and they played a lot of other Victorian teams at their home ground, which happens to be their home ground as well. I think that's just poor sportsmanship. I mean, it's, it's much you tougher. Uh, uh, Carol, you, can't, you cannot defend a team having seven games in a row at the MCG in the lead-up to the finals. You, you can't Richmond tell me don't that's have a fair same competition. Home ground Any excuse doesn't at wash. At the MCG that Adelaide and Port Adelaide have at the Adelaide You're Oval. joking. They don't. You they can't do. beat them there. Well, at the You're moment, kidding. because they're, 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 they're untouchable at the, the MCG. 30, for 30 years, they couldn't buy a pie at the MCG. I mean, it's only because they're a successful they're, team now that people are arcing up. They're, they're much more formidable there than Port are or Adelaide are at the Adelaide Oval. Oh, that is just... Uh, only at the, at the moment, because they're flying. Look That's at West Coast That's what we're talking about Earth. at the moment. Yeah, but they're, they're a team that is successful at the moment. That is just a ridiculous... I can't argument. believe even in uh, lockdown you've got the staff... But, you, you, tell me when, you tell me when Adelaide have got... Seven games in a row at Adelaide Oval, Caro. It, do, it doesn't happen. It's because never happened. Because it, it just happened. Happen. The, the, there are ten teams in Victoria. You, you've got to get over that. Mm. At that, that at the moment is not going to change. Try Stadium. as many would like, but it's not their home ground, Kane. Yep. I thought it was trout there for a minute. <laughs> um, Lordo, your yeah. blank canvas, if you can, please. Well, I'm being told that uh, over the next three years, which you've spoken about a little bit, we're going to whittle down the list sizes to 34. That's what I'm being told from Clubland. But I'm saying they cannot have list sizes under 35 players. And what we think we may have happen is they might have Category B players where you can top them up and get players on maybe short-term contracts uh, you know, if you need them and you're getting lots of injuries. Point number two, I want to go back to AFL reserves. I want to get back to that you have pl uh, players playing for Carlton Reserves, which are going to Essendon, which they've got. Every single team has their own reserves team. And, and gone are the days where you, know, you have them Box Hill Hawks, Northern Blues. They're, Andrew they're Pridham away. called yep. for this, and he, yep. wants, he wants them to play curtain raises before yes. their, their AFL teams every week. That's the thing that everyone loves, the romance no, of having a team. No money for reserves. What's that? The reserves, no money. No, but even it's a low budget. I think AFL clubs themselves think they would spend less, bring it back internally, than what's going on with these affiliate teams. No, point, I agree with you there. Point three, get back to pure drafting. I'm sick of tired of next generation academy player A, B, C... This draft coming up, there's 17 of the first best 41 players are linked to a club. I want to turn up on draft night and go, you know what, where's this player going, where's that player going? Not the fact that he's linked to a player when 
But you like father sons. I like that, yeah. But these players are good enough uh, to be drafted anywhere, not to be groomed in a next generation academy. So I want to get back to a pure drafting system again. Uh, Number four for me, leave the draft age at 18, but move the the competition to NAV under-19s. I think everyone would agree with that. Some coaches don't, but I think that's still fair. And uh, last point from me is I think the NAB League coaches get paid about $20,000 to be a coach. So this is where our best players come from. Let's put more resources into developing these players, more so at the 17, 18 years of age, because I don't think at this stage there's enough money poured into those clubs. So what? you don't need as many assistant and development coaches at clubs because they're coming into the system being Ready to developed. go, exactly, Carol. A lot, of, a lot yep. of things that cost yep. money there, all I can hear, but I'm sure that they'll all be considered in the <laughs> weeks ahead. Touch it's less money to have your own VFL team. I'm not, I don't agree.